Okay, this video is going to give you some details about the concept of the mole as well as some mole conversions. So what exactly is a mole? By definition, a mole is a unit of measurement used in chemistry to express the amount of a chemical substance. And this is not the same as measuring the mass. Amount in chemistry typically has to do with the number of particles. What does a mole look like? Well, that's a good question. A mole does not look like this in chemistry. <laughs> a mole looks like a sample of matter. In this case, we have some carbon. So that black powder is just carbon. And a mole of carbon has a mass of 12 grams. Here's a mole of water and it has a mass of 18 grams. And here's a mole of sodium chloride, and it has a mass of 58 grams. So each of these samples has a different mass, and yet they all represent one mole. So how can they all be equal to one mole if they have different masses? Well, again, that's because the mole concept has to do with the number of particles. The official definition of a mole is that it is re representing the number of particles in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. So carbon-12 is a specific isotope of carbon. And if you have exactly 12 grams of carbon-12, you have a mole. And how many particles are in a mole? I think you know this. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles represents one mole. Each of these samples has a different mass but yet they all contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So they all represent one mole. And that number is known as Avogadro's number in honor of the Italian scientist Amadeo Avogadro who lived in the uh, latter half of the 18th and first part of the 19th century. And his experiments led to what's called Avogadro's law which states that equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure have the same number of molecules. And this principle, which initially was not accepted widely, eventually became a fundamental principle that helped us to understand the atomic or the molecular view of matter. And so when the official number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, was discovered in the laboratory by scientists, it was named Avogadro's number in honor of the scientist. So he himself did not actually discover that number. So how was the number calculated in the laboratory? No, they did not actually count the individual atoms. And it's very difficult to see atoms. Here we have an image that was generated from a scanning tunneling microscope. And we are looking at individual atoms of an element and at the scale you can see that individual atoms are clearly on the order of picometers, you know, less than one nanometer. So how did they do this? How did they get the number? Well we have two bits of information that we're going to put together and they had to do with electric charge and understanding a little bit about electrochemistry. So our first number that's important comes from the experiments of Michael Faraday. He did a lot of work with electrochemistry and one of the important concepts that is attributed to Faraday is that the electric charge which is measured in coulombs of one mole of electrons is equal to Faraday's constant 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. The second fact that will help us put this together comes from a man named Robert Millikan and his famous oil drop experiment established that the electric charge on a single electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now when you put those two facts together it allows us to calculate the number of particles in one mole and this is how it works. We take the Faraday constant so 96,500 coulombs per one mole of electrons and then we multiply by the conversion factor that will cancel out coulombs and give you number of electrons per mole. So by multiplying these two conversion factors together 
we get on our calculator 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd. Now I could give you more specific, more precise values for both the Faraday constant and for the charge on an electron. And the numbers would look something like this. So that is a more precise version of the Faraday constant. And that number is a more precise version of the standard charge on one electron. And if you do this math on your calculator, you get a much more precise estimate of Avogadro's number. So we typically just say 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, even though the number could be expressed m with much more significant digits. Okay, so now let's talk about how you measure mass in chemistry. Usually you would say that mass is measured in grams, but another unit that is used in chemistry is the atomic mass unit. Let's talk about both of these. If I said to you that one mole of carbon-12 has a mass of 12 grams and that one mole of carbon-12 contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, the question that I could ask would be, well, how much does a single atom of carbon-12 weigh? And the way to calculate that would be to simply divide 12.0 grams by Avogadro's number. Let's do that. Let's take a look. How much does a single atom of carbon-12 weigh? Well, you're going to get a very small number. You get around 1.99 times 10 to the negative 23rd gram. It turns out that the AMU that I mentioned, the atomic, ma atomic mass unit, is defined as exactly one-twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. So an atomic mass unit is one-twelfth the mass of an atom of carbon-12. If we take that 1.99 times 10 to the negative 23rd and divide by 12, we now have defined an AMU. So it's much more convenient for chemists to write the term AMU than to write this really small number of grams. And an AMU is only used on the molecular level. When you're talking about atoms and molecules, you can talk about their mass in units called AMU. When you're talking about much larger quantities, then you can use grams. So mass units can be either grams or AMU. A mole of carbon-12 equals 12 grams, but if I was talking about a single atom of carbon-12, it would be 12 AMUs. The distinction there is that grams go with moles and AMUs go with tiny particles like atoms. Now you may be looking on your periodic table right now and you might be wondering when I refer to carbon-12, what about this? The symbol for carbon and the atomic mass below it, it seems to indicate that maybe I'm not correct. It says 12.01. So what's going on here is that it turns out that there are different isotopes of carbon. There's actually carbon-12 and carbon-13, for example and that the number you see on the periodic table represents the average mass of all the different isotopes of that particular element based on their relative abundance in nature. So for example, aluminum, you could say that one mole of aluminum has a mass of 26.98 grams, but if you're talking about a single atom of aluminum, then the mass would be 26.98 AMUs. So if you're talking about moles, then the mass is in grams. If you're talking about individual particles, then the mass would be in AMUs. So how do we calculate the mass of a compound? Here are two examples of compounds, H2O and CH3OH. All you have to do is look up the atomic mass of each element and then add everything up. So for the case of water, hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1.01 and there are two of them in the formula. Oxygen has an atomic mass of 16.00, and there's only one oxygen in the formula. So the mass of water is 18.02. I'm not gonna talk about units on this slide, but you can guess that the units would either be grams or AMUs. For the case of methanol, or CH3OH, carbon is 12.01 times one, Hydrogen, again, is 1.01, and we have four of them in the formula. And then we have oxygen, and we have 
one of them. So the total mass for CH3OH is 32.06. So referring to these two compounds and the numbers that you see, one mole of water has a mass of 18.02 grams, but a single molecule of water would have a mass of 18.02 AMUs. And then a similar situation for methanol. A mole is 32.06 grams, but a single molecule of that substance would be 32.06 AMUs. By the way, there are two different terms that we use in chemistry for the particles of a compound. Sometimes we use the word molecule, as you can see here. These are examples of substances that exist as molecules. But we also have, and by the way, these are covalent compounds. We also have ionic compounds, and because we can't use the word molecule to describe a ionic compound, we would use the term formula unit, which refers to one section of the large crystal lattice in the way that these ions are put together. The term is formula unit. Now when it comes to elements, we actually also have two different terms that we use. We can either refer to an element as atom, so a single particle of an element, but yet some elements exist in groups where they are bonded together. So you can have a molecule and still have it refer to an element. All right. Okay, so here are some examples of one-step conversion that you can do. Grams to moles, moles to grams, particles to moles and moles to particles. Here's one example. 25 grams of lithium is converted into moles in one step. So we used the number from the periodic table, 6.94 grams of lithium per mole, and that conversion is one step. Here's another example involving Avogadro's number. 4.7 moles of helium is converted into atoms, and we get 2.8 times 10 to the 24th atoms of helium. So let's see what some two-step conversions would look like. You can either do grams to particles or you can do particles to grams. Here's an example of going from 45 grams of water into molecules of water. So we have to use both the molar mass as well as Avogadro's number. And when we do this in two steps, we get 1.5 times 10 to the 24th molecules of water. If you want to go from particles to grams, Here's an example where you start with 2.9 times 10 to the 22nd formula units of sodium chloride, and after we use Avogadro's number as well as the molar mass of sodium chloride, we end up with 2.8 grams of sodium chloride. Well, okay, these are just a couple examples of the conversions, and hopefully you understand the mole concept a little more in depth. That's it. Thanks for watching.